Uh, so show me the money, right? So if you've been in the compliancy and audit track today, it's audit, 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 fix it, fix it, fix it. Well, where's the how? How do we do it? And more importantly, how do I get the funding to do that? How do I prove to whomever my boss is, whoever the money man is or the money woman, um, that I need that particular tool and why? So this is going to break down um, a, a, whole, a, a way of doing that for you. And uh, I forgot my clicker, so i got to do it manually. All right, so the obligatory who am I slide. Uh, so I'm an information security officer, not a vendor. Uh, I just happen to be an information security officer with Health Tech Solutions. So I'm in the healthcare field. Uh, I'm also the team chief for our defensive cyber operations uh, element with the Kentucky National Guard. I've got some folks in the audience here, too, to spot check me if they need. And uh, so basically, you know, just like everybody else, I harass my coworkers. I consider, consider me the fun police. I'm the, the person that tells them, no, they can't do things. Uh, but I am also, uh, it, I do enjoy the beer and bourbon. Um, I put my ticket in the bourbon out there, so I'll play with that. So a couple things. So we've got there, um, Cyber Shield is one of the uh, events that we did. I've got um, several folks in the room here. Um, that were on that event, and then of course with the Army, I serve at the, the pleasure of the President and the needs of the Army. So that was me a couple years ago as a uh, agriculture specialist in Afghanistan. I could really grow tomatoes in my own backyard, but I went and told people in a third world country uh, how to grow uh, 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 grapes, raise chickens, and, uh, and do some other things. So it's great. So there we go. On to the next one. So this is kind of what we're going to cover in the 50 minutes. I try to, I, I talk really fast because I've got a lot to say. If you have a question, just stop me um, and we'll try to get through this. So, um, why we do it, why it's overwhelming, uh, what the CIS controls are, my journey, I'll just give you kind of a story of, of how it came to be that, that I became a, a fangirl of the, the controls, and then the 85% solution, how I can get you 85% of what you need and just the first top five controls. The why we do it, right? So I'm sure we're all familiar with the Verizon Breach Report. If you haven't read it, you should. Uh, it gives you a lot of industry-specific information. I'll read the few first pages and then scroll down to my own industry and kind of pop around. PrivacyRights.org, one billion records have been breached since 2005 of the uh, 7,000 breaches. And then, of course, phishing, right? So phishing is, uh, is our big vector right now, and it kind of breaks it down into um, uh, different uh, industries. So like my industry, healthcare, 10% uh, of uh, are uh, susceptible to uh, phishing attacks there. Where manufacturing, you've got 13%. You know, where do you fall on that? Where should you be putting your money? Is that going to be, are you in education? or even manufacturing, kind of where, need to know where you are in order to know um, how to get to get there. So, let's see, and so just a quick, oh, that's all right. So this is me and my team. No, I didn't misspeak. That's the rest of my team. So this is me when I got my first uh, ISO job. They're like, hey, come on in. Security, I'm like, great, I'm really great at managing people. They're like, yeah, 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 we got some people for you. And I showed up, and I'm like, where's my people? So I'm a really good manager. <laughs> They're like, oh, by the way, it's just you. So quick, you know, I went from federal government uh, to healthcare. I went from one set of acronyms to another set of acronyms, and I needed to learn on the fly really quickly. So all this stuff started flying at me. We had frameworks and HIPAA and law and FISMA and DIACAP and high tech and ISO and all this stuff. I'm like, what the heck do I do? And then they're like, oh, and here's all the tools. And then all of a sudden these vendors started coming at me. And they're like, hey, buy my thing. And hey, buy my thing. And here's this. And every time I put a card in a fishbowl, uh, no offense to any vendors out there, because I do like to win stuff. So I understand it's a, it's a quid pro quo. Uh, and so I was just overwhelmed. Now what am I going to do? Because I really got to narrow this down because I really, I only like to work 40, 50 hours a week. I do want to spend time with my family and I want to keep my job and know all of the people that work at my company's jobs as well. So that's when the, the, uh, the CIS controls came as a big bright light in the sky, shined down on me. 
and uh, gave me an option there of, uh, of what I could do. They could narrow down that scope and, uh, and help me kind of get something that I could implement, I could audit, and I could find solutions for the, uh, the risks and the problems that we, that we were facing at that time. So this is basic background. Um, and who, who here uses the controls already? Anybody? All right, so it's, uh, there's 20 of them all together. Uh, they went from, in 2008, they started off as the critical security controls. They've since dropped the critical, basically they're down to CIS controls. Uh, and it went from SANS, so SANS Top 20, if you've heard of those. So SANS Top 20, they moved it over to CIS so that it would be nonprofit, and they could kind of split uh, up from them and not have to worry about any undue um, kind of uh, influence and get that into a sphere where we can continue to support it uh, and continue to work with it without it becoming vendor-specific or uh, owned by a certain group. So first assessment, be gentle. And just a side note, I like to find like funny little memes for slides. Don't Google be gentle, all right? Um, <laughs> I learned all sorts of stuff, but not the stuff that would be relevant to this class. Um, so develop a plan, right? So I said, all right, this is how we're gonna do the assessment. We're gonna do it, we're gonna take it slow. I'm gonna do it a couple hours a week for a couple weeks, get the guys in. When I start to see their eyes roll back or the flames in their eyes, and I say, okay, we're going to break for now, we'll come back and we'll do this. And it was really a question and answer session that first time around. Earn their trust. I'm about to tell you how you're all dorked up. So you don't want to hear that. I need to earn your trust so that you believe that you can tell me the truth. And it's okay, because in the end, we're going to be in this together. We have a plan, and we're going to fix it. And then don't place blame. And that was the biggest thing. My IT guys don't want to admit that something is not, uh, something is broken or something is misconfigured or it's not working the way it should be. And so we really had to walk through the process because I, you know, where I grew up, it was always the distant end, right? It's never my stuff. It's their stuff. And so for them, for me to come in and say, all your stuff's dorked up, um, it really took a lot of finesse and uh, some hand-holding, so I really wanted to be gentle along the way. And I needed to figure out what tools we needed to do the job. So what I did in mine, I'll go through my journey and then we'll walk through what uh, SANS recommends at this point. So what I did is I took, we went through the 20 controls, we went through each step and I said, you know, Security on wireless is this set up and they'll, they'll have specific questions for you to ask, you know, does, do you have this um, configured? Do you have that configured? And it's a step by step and we'll show you the, uh, the, the tool that does that and those specific questions here in a few uh, minutes. But what I did is I took all of that information and it's based on the NIST 800-53. So each one of those controls is um, uh, crosswalked to the SANS or to the, uh, the CIS controls. And so I can say, okay, well, um, uh, access control is a priority one. So if something was missing in access control, that's a high priority for me to fix because it's a P1. So it went for P1, P2s, and P3s. And we got a P0 in there as well. But And then I took that and I overlaid what tool I thought, and there's better tools here, but this was the first time that I tried. I said, what tool do I need to fix that thing? And in this first time, and it was a you know, brand new company, um, I think like 37% of the problems or the, thing, the risks that we currently had could be mitigated by implementing, this time we had chosen like, uh, SCCF. So I could mitigate those risks. And so now I had something specific to show to my CEO and my COO that said, this is the thing. We don't like seeing this big red thing, right? I've got 63% uh, of these vulnerabilities, and of that, 37% can be mitigated if I implement SCCM. Okay, well, implement the SCCM. How can he argue with me at that point? Uh, and so we went through the same thing. 22% was the SIM, right? We didn't have a SIM at the time. Uh, again, it was brand new, and I said, so 22% of these issues can be, can be mitigated if we implement a SIM solution. 
Well, I like that, right? I, I like numbers, and I'm, so we always want to be quantitative when we talk about how to fix stuff. And if I'm asking for a tool, if I'm asking to spend money, I need to show them what the result's going to be. And this was a fairly quick way of, uh, of showing them those results. So, um, so we went through each one. And then what I did is, so this was the overall. So I said, if we put all this stuff in, and some of it was simple, like security officer was stuff I had to do. There was no money involved in that. It was just stuff that I needed to do, um, so I was going to do it. So then I could make that, you know, turn that red bubble green. And some various things there. So then I broke it down to each priority. So priority ones are the things I'm going to work at, my team are going to work at first. Uh, one thing you'll notice here, so there's 20 controls, and of the priority ones, almost all of them are in the top five. So the top five, as you'll see here in a minute, really mitigates most of those uh, risks. So basically what I said is, all right, boss, if I implement, if I fix these things, these, uh, these vulnerabilities or these risks, um, I'm going to go from 63% red, or up, uh, is it, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to drop down, yes, there we go. I'm going to drop from 63% red down to 27% red. Well, that's good. You I mean, you just do one, you just do the first thing. If I just knock out the priority one things, I'm going to go from, I'm going to drop down um, from 63 down to, uh, to 27. All right. And our answer was, we'll go do those things. So, uh, so then we go down to, then we had the priority number two. So once I finish doing all of the first things, so now I know where to focus, and my team knows where to focus. And I'm not saying that we didn't hit some low-hanging fruit along the way, right? So, I mean, there were times when we were in the assessment, and it was hitting a radio button, uh, making a check, you know, clicking a checkbox here, making a quick configuration change. Now, I didn't mark them green at the time, because as far as the assessment was concerned, they were red. And I was, that's kind of like putting it on your to-do list after you've done it, so you can check it off your to-do list at the end of the day, right? So you get credit for it. I wanted to make sure we got credit for everything that we, that we did. But we, we hit that low-hanging fruit on the way, too. Um, so here we go. Priority number two. So now I'm going to implement, after I knock out all of the, the high-risk stuff, my P1s, we're going to head over to P2. And uh, once we knock out all of P2s, we are, we are 75, this is my assessment, based on what we had and the tools we needed, we'd be at 75% green. So that, I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, and that gave us the the big picture of how to go ahead make those changes in a way that uh, they gave them a really clear picture of why I needed to do something, what I needed to do, and what the implement implementation uh, of that was going to be. And so then, of course, we're down to the last. And you know, I didn't, I didn't get to 100% on this first go around, right? So we had some residual there. There are going to be some things in the controls that maybe your company, you know, there's going to be reasons you cannot or will not or don't, uh, will, cannot or will not be able to implement that particular control. You know, we only have so much money, we talk about risk, if that's not something, if that risk is so low of ever occurring, but the, the cost of implementing it is so high, I may choose, okay, that's a risk that is going to be a residual risk, the boss signs off on it, um, and then we move on. But we've gone from 63% in the red down to 6% in the red in, a, in, a, in three slides. See? It's like watching uh, it's like watching HGTV when they remodel a bathroom in, in 30 minutes. So bam, ta-da, <laughs> success. It's a little bit longer than that. So now I'll go ahead and switch over to, um, to how the questions work and how you can kind of uh, move over, move to those in a little bit better of a way I found after my, my journey. It's broken. <laughs> so, quick, somebody knows how to fix things. Uh, so, we'll look at a couple of the, uh, the websites real quickly just so you can get an idea. So, data breaches, right? So, we talked about the one billion uh, data breaches since 2005. Here's the, sl the, the website for that, and the last slide I have does have all of those websites listed. And I'll have that. So I've got a Dropbox set up. It'll be set up for the next few days. You'll be able to draw, um, download a few of these things from 
So data breaches. I like this site because it goes down. So those, those are all the, uh, the breaches we've got listed. But now you can actually dig down into that breach and get information about it. So I've got uh, on a couple of uh, uh, distro lists. And any time there's a healthcare uh, data breach, I get the information, how much that cost, how many records there were, who was it, what happened, what was the, the outcome. Um, so you can pick your industry and get that same information delivered directly to you. And that's how I scare my bosses, right? I tell them, oh my goodness, so there's this hospital down in Florida that uh, just got pinged for a million dollars because of this. So we really need to make sure we're still taking care of those things. Sometimes you gotta, you got to scare them a little bit. So you can, you can make those selections there. Um, and then run the report. So I like this website for uh, research and information. I like this website because it's cool. It's got bubbles. Whoa, look, what's this Equifax thing, right? So here you have, and I like the filters. So we can come down here and we'd say, all right, I want to see all um, healthcare breaches, right? So then that scrolls down, it shows you all the years. And it's fascinating because you can really watch. Um, the evolution of our field, right? Like 2007. Look at that, it's little dots, little dots. And then all of a sudden, about 2009 is when uh, when things started really getting uh, getting rocky for us. So look at, so we'll watch that happen. You see the difference, uh, whether or not it was a lot or there were, um, you know, it got quiet again right, for a while, and then bam, there's Anthem. And so we do financials. There is it, yeah. And then on this one, you can also dig down. So once you click on it, so you've got the read more there, and that'll take you to uh, an article about the breach as well. So this is really neat. Again, you're able to, uh, to pull in your particular sector, take a look. It's great for slide candy, you know, uh, when you need to throw that up there. And I talked about those priorities. Where do I get my priorities from? Here's the um, the uh, the NIST, the National Vulnerability Database. So I pull up here and then set access control, right? Access control is always priority number one. So anything that has to do with access control, I know that goes to the top of the list when it comes to implementing a solution to resolve whatever vulnerability uh, that I've found in that area. And for me, I've got most, uh, most all my systems fall under the moderate category. There's 159 <coughs> controls um, for my, for a moderate, uh, using the NIST 800-53. So when I look at 100, when I just think of the word 100, or you know, the number 159 controls I have to implement, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. Or I could be like, hey, I got 20 security controls. Ah, all right, let's get some coffee and get the day going. Because those controls, all of these separate controls are uh, nested into that framework. And that allows me to get things done and start knocking these off my to-do list, right? So this is a great way to figure out what needs to happen and when it needs to happen. Of course, you can dig down into each one of these controls. These are the families there. Um, if you're not familiar with that website, obviously you should be. So that'll break into our tools here in a minute. And then, um, all right. So this comes from SANS. I actually just did go to a uh, SANS course on the critical, uh, or on the security controls a while back. Um, so the recommendations that I use for tools, while this is agnostic and I don't sell any of these tools, there's uh, sample tools that they use to, uh, to illustrate how you can mitigate or uh, respond to that particular control. And then there's a list of commercial tools and a list of open source tools. And that really just depends on what fits best in your environment. I use some of the tools they recommend, but I have some other tools that, I, that either were already there when I got there and I'm continuing to use, or I've purchased because they fit better with my particular company's model. But within these next five tools that we'll talk about, the idea is in just five tools, you should be able to knock out 85% of these controls within the controls. 
So the first thing is the assessment. And we'll talk about, so I'm, I'm a big, right, so I do a NIST 800-53. I'm all about the HIPAA compliance. So we've got, uh, there's NIST 800, it's version 4 right now. There's the NIST, there's their cyber security framework, but we also have ISO 27000. Uh, IEC, so this crosswalks all of these controls with whatever industry standard that you that you follow. So for me, I'm NIST, so everything I do crosswalks to how am I going to uh, meet it up meet up with this control. So here we go, uh, critical security control number five, controlled use of, of administrative privileges. That cross walks directly to account management under the access control uh, NIST standard. So that way I've got that checked off as I'm moving down the line. But how do I uh, audit for it? Well, we've got something for that too. So here is the assessment tool. This is where you sit down with your team um, and, and ask them first. So the first time is, is ask. The second time, so I say, how do you do that? Or are you doing that? Usually I go to north-south or east-west. Um, the second time, I so now it's trust but verify, right? So I trusted them the first time when they said, yes, we do that thing. So what's my next step? To verify that they're doing it. And there are tools and automated ways to make that happen. So now i got to go, okay. Now I gotta go plug in that machine that's not on the network and wait around and see how long it takes for somebody to come walking up and be like, hey, hey, what's, what's that? You know, did they get alerted for it in the 60 minutes that they said they were getting alerted for it? And that's when we continue on as you mature through the, the process. But this is a great start. So I've kind of fluffed some numbers here. But what this shows up here, we've got your maturity level. So at a level one, the policies are completed. And if you're like me, level one's the hardest one because <laughs> it's all about writing policies. Uh, you can go out and buy them off the internet. Uh, uh, there's some options there, but it's really getting the policies in place. How can you implement uh, a control if there's no policy to say that you're going to implement it? And then level two is that you've implemented controls one through five. And the goal really is to get through to level two uh, the, the SANS instructors, uh, the, the, the um, developer for this course said that he had never, um, he's an auditor, he had never assessed anybody over a maturity rating of 3.5. So you'll notice you've got policies complete, controls 1 through 5 implemented, all the controls implemented, automation, and then reporting. So at 3.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so you got five numbers. You're not going to get to a five until you've automated it and are reporting on it consistently. And that really gets to be the hard part. Like we can get 80% there, but usually that last 20% for us is the hard thing to do. So each one of these tabs, and this is a Creative Commons um, license, and I've got it up, you can get it off the SANS website or I've got it on the, my Dropbox for this week. So you come in here and you answer questions. So we'll go to one I haven't answered yet. So control number three, secure configuration for hardware and software. So the first thing you do is policy defined. And when you drop down, you've got a couple options there, which is no policy, informal policy, which most of us have informal policies, right? Uh, partially written, completely written, and it turns out that there's another level which is approved, right? So we can write them all day long, but is the, is the policy actually approved? So once you collect, you uh, select where you are on that, and remember it's important to be truthful. So approved is green, but written. So we've got an amber there, and it starts to move up what percentage of the risks have been addressed under that control. And so this really is, it's just a, a, a tabletop. You're sitting there with, uh, with your team, and you're walking through each one, and you're asking yourself, 
Number uh, 3.2, follow strict configuration management, building a secure image that is used to build all new systems as they are deployed. Are we doing that? Well, yes. Yeah, we've got a policy, and you know, that one, yep, we're, we're good. We've got a written policy. It's been validated. It's approved. All right. So how is the uh, control implemented? So uh, is the whole policy implemented, right? So, so you can either have parts of the policy, some, most, or all. So in this case, we're going to say all. Everything that we do is off a of standard image. All of that's, uh, that's approved. All right, great. We are looking good. Next one is automation. So this is where it gets hard, right? So is it automated? What part of the process is automated? Uh, is it automated on some of them? So Adam, you used to, you used to uh, um, load a lot of systems. Was the process completely automated? Would you consider it automated? If somebody were to ask you that question at that time, would you have said some of the systems are automated, most of them or all of them? still had human interaction. Yeah, right? So you'd probably say, I would say, in your case, I mean, it was a, it was a, uh, it was like a factory of, of systems being loaded. I remember, uh, I remember seeing them, but at some point somebody was sticking the disc in, somebody was pulling the disc out, so it wasn't completely automated. And then that makes you think, well, how do you define automated at that point, right? So now you're thinking, well, what does that mean? I, I'd be happy if I just have to stick the disc in and pull the disc out. That's good for me. And that's where they leave room. This is for you, and you'll have to define a few of these. And we've had some long discussions. We'll end up, we'll bump into one of these, and it's like, so what does that mean? What does that mean to us? How are we going to define automated? And so there's a level at which that's where I step in and say, well, according to the NIST 800-53, and, and, start, and start throwing out all of the uh, uh, regulations, right, of my guys and I, but between that, is the gray area. What do we consider automated? And that's up to us. And then last is report it. So in this case, what would we report on for automating um, um, baselines? Report on all systems. So in this case, we would say, okay, well, I mean, we're going to say, yeah, we're mostly automated. There is some human interaction. But at the end of the month, I report uh, all systems that were loaded that month. Um, and that's, that process is in place, and we're good to go. So there you go. At that point, you've addressed 16% of the risk under this control number three, and uh, you've moved over to the dashboard. So now the dashboard shows where you are in the implementation. Of, uh, of that particular control. And you walk this through. Now you see when you go back to the Be Gentle slide, there is a reason that we want to have a plan and kind of roll this out slowly the first time because you will get some fatigue sitting in a conference room thinking about each one of these subsections in the question. How do we do it? Some of the stuff you'd be like, oh, well, shucks, we really hadn't thought about that before if you're a smaller company. Or, if you're a larger organization, well, shoot, okay, who do we need to go to to get the answer for that uh, and start bringing those pieces in? So I said that the top five really are where we're going to focus um, the last few minutes that we have, or the last um, ten minutes that I have here, is um, where you get the most bang for your buck, right? So what are we going to do for, uh, for that? And it turns out that there are some recommended tools. I, I did promise some, at least show you how to do it, get your money's worth. So we'll go back here. Coming. <laughs> there we go. So we talked about uh, the implementation percentages by the controls. So you walk through, and this will show you. So again, another beautiful dashboard, another great slide for those who are into slideology and, and some eye candy there for the bosses. So now we've got to find the right tool for, to do the job. All right, so that's the most important part. We're like, yeah, great, processes and reports, wonderful. How do I do my job, and how do I do it well, and how do I only work 40 or 50 hours a week? So... 85% solution and five controls. So 
What I do is because I do fall under an estate 100-53 is I crosswalk each one of the controls to the controls in the NIST. So if I implement inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices, the number one thing you should do, you shouldn't do anything else before you make sure that you have, you are, because if something is on your network and you don't know it, how are you supposed to protect it? How are you supposed to protect your network? So that's why inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices is the number one control. And this is what it goes to in the NIST. So I say, okay, I got it, I got it, what do I do? So SANS took each one of those controls and they said, all right, these are the tools that we recommend um, for the for the controls. And they're in no particular order, and it really just depends on where you are uh, in your journey and what you need to do, but we also have open and free uh, sources available as well because there are some of us that no matter how much we tell our bosses that we need something, um, it's going to be open neck. I can afford system center. I cannot. Uh, and so those, those are decisions you have to make then based on um, the business. And so in this case, there is a, a sample tool here, which is the, uh, the network mapper. And so these are the following tools. So let's see. Oh, this. Um, this one should be. SolarWinds. Yeah, it's SolarWinds. It's the Zen Map. Um, so okay. So we talked about Zen. A lot of us are familiar with Zen Map and N Map, and uh, and they're both powerful tools. But uh, they recommend, or the sample tool here was the SolarWinds uh, Network Topology Mapper. So we've got network mapper, right? So it gives you the tool, it gives you the website. This is all right. You can come over here and take a look. It recommends commercial, and there's one like I said, Open Boss is a open source solution that it recommends for uh, control number two. But it talks about if you use this particular tool or a tool similar, you will be able to um, complete the automation process uh, of that that particular control. So in this case. It's network topology mapper. It's making sure it goes out there and it collects and knows what all your nodes. It shows up. It's, it's pretty cool. You can click on the, the video and watch it. Um, so that's the control there. And then uh, go to the next one. All right, so number two. Number two will pop up here in a second, and it's inventory of authorized and unauthorized software, right? So we've got the devices first, and then next the software. And it's remember, it's inventory of, unauth of authorized and unauthorized software. Is iTunes an authorized or unauthorized software on your network? That's I don't, on your policy. I don't care, right? I mean... What I care about is, do I know iTunes is on my network? If it's part of my policy, it's part of my policy. I don't care. If the boss says you can have it, you can have it. What I care about is whether or not I know you have it. Because I have to know you have it in order to keep it updated. And so that's where it comes into authorized. Try not to get hung up. I mean, I can say, boss, and I, you know, I say, hey, boss, my recommendation is that we only have business software on our systems. Because I have a tiny group of people over here, and we don't want to have a bunch of whole extra work um, managing the updates for a bunch of superfluous software that you let your people have. And by the way, they're keeping you know copyrighted song material on your network that you're paying storage fees for. You know, so you can go that route. Regardless, at the end of the day, my job is to protect it. So I just need to know it's there. And this is where we get into <coughs> continuous monitoring, your baseline configurations. There are some, you know, there's there's quick scripts that you can run to do baseline configurations if you're that small. <coughs> what, what was my baseline configuration this morning? What was it this afternoon? What's my delta, right? What's the change? And then there are some, <coughs> some uh, commercial and some open source options for that as well. And so this is really... Uh, 
again, we have to, you have to think about the policies and the culture. You know, I came from one culture on the federal government side, which was, lock it down, lock it down. I think we were the last people uh, in the free world to be able to access Facebook uh, between 8 and 5, right? Uh, and that's fine. That was our culture. So what do you think happened when I showed up in the civilian world? One, I was the first person in the office every morning. Uh, and two, <laughs> and two, I'm like, what do you mean? What do you what is, what's going on here? Why do you, you guys have administrator privileges to your laptops? <laughs> Not anymore. Um, and, so, and it took a while. I'm still working on it. Some people still turn the other way when I walk down the hallway, but uh, they'll get used to me. So again, it, it's really about culture. And the important thing is, is that you figure out what that culture is. You write the policies and then you begin. That's why policies are number one, right? I can't take away your iTunes until my boss lets me write a policy that says I can take it away. And that way I can say, well, it says right here. Oh, look, there's a signature. Uh, and by the way, now I'm going to automate that process, right? Because I don't even have to come to you. It's just going to disappear off your computer. And then you're, you're going to call IT and IT's going to be like, oh, read this policy. You can't do that. So, and if you don't like it, go see the security officer because she's used to people not liking her. So I can try to keep candy at the desk at least. Um, and we all know, I, I think that we would all know why this is important when it comes to exploitation, right? It's, uh, once the adversary is in your network, they will eventually, they will slowly but eventually find a privileged account. Uh, and so that is why this is so important. And uh, I, I believe that we probably are all um, very well versed in that concept here. So the tools, right? So what are we going to do for this one? Give me the tool to fix this. What is my holy grail? Well, it's not really a holy grail. And there's a couple on here. Um, Spiceworks is one where you get like half these people are going to say, ah, oh, Spiceworks is horrible. The other half's going to be like, it's quick, it's easy, it suits me. All right, I have, I'm in a small company. Spiceworks, fast and easy. There are people in this room that Spiceworks is not going to work for their, <laughs> their company, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they have to go with something that's a little bit more robust. And in here, this one uh, I have not uh, actually tried, but it looks really cool. Is um, uh, oh, I didn't say the name of the the sample tool. It's that's a weird website. Oh, it's a uh, Nuke Pro. Where? Oh, there it is. New Pro. New, new Professional. Um, so again, it's got a website as well, and you go there, it shows you the different screenshots, but it goes out, and it pulls everything, and it says, boom, 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 here's all your nodes, here's the Windows software, here's the version it's running, here, here's the information. And so that is very <coughs> quick, that's what I need is quick, right, because I want to go home at the end of the day. Um, they start at happy hour at 5, not at 7, let's get out of here. So, uh, so these are some... Some great tools. And again, the slides will be there. So this is it. Bam. Tool number two. We're almost there. Number three, secure configurations for hardware and software. So when you start off with a small company and you're buying one laptop at a time, you are configuring one laptop at a time. Every time there's a new user, you're going through because you don't have the licensing to, to start being able to, to run that process. So this is really, this is actually pretty hard. And if you notice, uh, I, went, I forgot to add some of those priorities there. Um, this has got a lot of controls available. So the first two, I just had, you know, this many. Well, now we've got these as well. So now we've got flaw uh, remediation in there, uh, acquisition process. How am I getting the laptops? How am I getting my, my, um, my hardware? Uh, information system monitoring, configuration settings, least functionality, right? make sure that they can do the least possible. So there's a lot of stuff in this. And all of a sudden, we've started develop. we've gathered all of these. So rather than 159 controls, I'm on number three. And just by implementing these tools and then answering those questions, I am, I am able at that point to identify and say, yes, I've met that control. Yes, I've met that control. Because I do a system security um, uh, configuration for each one of my uh, systems. And it's like the smallest one I can find to, to do is, I think, 35 pages of the NIST, each control on there. And it's, and it's, it's my, my least favorite part of the job, right? So the, the, uh, the tool here, uh, Qualys is the one that's recommended as a sample tool. If you go take a look at their website, that'll show you what if you implemented that 
would meet most of what's in uh, the control number three. And then, of course, one of the things I notice anytime it's in green, it means it's already in a recommendation for one of the other controls. So, unfortunately, it's PowerShell, right? So, with PowerShell, if we use uh, the WMI object or the CIMI or CI, CIM instance, um, that you've already got PowerShell. Um, so that's if you li live it, learn it, love it. If you're going to the class at uh, DerbyCon, um, then that might be something, especially if you're small enough, that you can knock this out without actually having other tools. If you if you want, that's already in your toolbox. So these are some options here. Um, again, for the commercial side, the free side for implementing number uh, three. So then on to my favorite. Oh wait, no, that's not my favorite. The next one's my favorite. This one, this, this is continuous vulnerability assessment remediation. This is like nobody's favorite. Um, but this is the security assessments. This is a continuous monitoring. Oh, the SIM and the logs, and there it's where they're at. And they're so important, and they're so incredibly boring. Um, but it's how we do our job, right? And it's a requirement that vulnerability scanning so, um, and this one, I, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's available out there, especially the government now, the federal government. I know the first time I was like, hey, boss, so we're going to do this thing, like, Department of Homeland Security is going to start scanning our stuff. And he's like, but that doesn't sound like a good idea at all. I'm like, I know, I know, <laughs> but hear me out, <laughs> right? And at first, I, cause it, that was my first thought, so I'm like, oh, I really want them to know, right? Like. I get in trouble if I do something wrong and I get fined. So now I'm going to turn around and have the same people scan my box for the vulnerability and tell me, hey, by the way, you're broken. Uh, but then you're going to turn an eye and I, I'm like, ah, I just, I don't, I feel like, you know, the, the hand flinching. I'm like, I'm not sure. But it actually turns out I, I use it and it works out really well. The, the tools here. So the one I'm talking to, Open Boss. All right, so we have Nessus, right? Everybody uses Nessus in some form or fashion. Um, my third-party scans are from Nessus. So that's great. So Nessus used to be open source. Well, one of the problems with that is that you had a lot of pen testers. Uh, everybody's got to make money. So they would use an open source tool and then charge you <laughs> to do the assessment. And Nessus was like, ah, it seems kind of shady. So uh, they started charging for it, and there's some other reasons behind it too, but that's at least the fun sort of part of the story. So OpenBoss is actually a derivative of Nessus. Uh, it's got a lot of the same functionality. It's open source still, and it's really even for SANS in this particular case was the recommended sample tool for this control. So here you have a control number four um, with the tool recommended to uh, meet that control being open source. So this one, you're like, hey boss, I already fixed that and I fixed it for free. So I tell my boss all the time, uh, in order to spend money, I've got to save money. So I find a place to save money and I'm like, hey, guess what? I just saved you $15,000 this year. It's like, wow, that's great, that's great. So I have this tool that I need to purchase now it's sixteen thousand dollars, so really it's only like a thousand dollars, you know. So that's how I, that's how I make my money. Is first I go find it, how to how to save it, and then I spend it. So in this one, I actually did this. This one I did this is where I got it there. So Open Boss for in my internal stuff, I need to do, do third party scans. So uh, DHS does and NCATS. So NCATS, you go send an email to NCATS at info. They send you the packet. They will scan all your front-facing machines. They send you the vulnerability assessment. And the nice thing is it's a very small one. So Nessus is great, but I can't, I don't have time for noise, right? I've got too much else going on. I need a report that tells me this is what's broken. This is what you need to fix. And oh, by the way, this is how you fix it. And so they do a great job. I get a weekly scan. Um, it scans my boxes every seven days, sends me a report. You know, you have this vulnerability, suite 32, uh, usually a lot of little SSL stuff. Uh, moderate, medium, low, it shows you that, it shows you over time. Um, I, I pull out some of the, the graphs, when we're, you know, we've got no vulnerabilities because we're small, so we, we don't have a whole lot that's front facing. Throw that into the RFPs to show how awesome I am. Um, so it's a really great tool. They also do pen testing. They'll come on site. They offer, we actually talked to the DHS guy um, two months ago at a cyber, the cyber workshop. 
uh, and he talks about it as well. So it's a really great tool. Go uh, check them out because that's free money. You're going to get scanned. You've got it already once a week. Very small, very concise. Last one here is controlled use of administrative privileges. See, this one's my favorite, right? This is like, stop! I was literally walked into a company and they all had admin access. And then I found out that's not really, because I grew up, that wasn't a thing. Like, I was, I was with the federal government. Like, that's never a thing. Um, the civilian world, it's, like, it's taking a longer amount of time for that to kind of catch on as not being a thing. Um, and it's hard. When you want to pull somebody's admin rights from them, it is not, it's not a pretty day, especially uh, if they're an executive. And so there's a lot of great ways to fix that. You need to have a whole class on showing your boss why they should not be an administrator, right? Like, take an ex a vulnerability and exploit it in front of them and show them what's going to happen when somebody fishes them. Like, my CEO gets fished all the time, right? Um, so show that fish, do it. Show the exploit, and, and then you'll be like, oh, well, I don't want, I don't want that anymore. Show them why they don't want to be administrators. That's the hard part, because they're the, they're most vulnerable. So quickly, here's the, the tools for number five. On this one, it's the SCC, the Access Auditor, uh, the website there. Again, you still got the, the PowerShell commands that you can use if that's, uh, if something that you're able, um, and this one, we don't have pretty much it's all just commands, right? They got Linux commands and PowerShell commands there. Um, that's a lot of manual work. If you don't have time, you want to check out the industry tools, uh, there they are. And some of the stuff's actually already built in. You know, look for the stuff that's built in. The vast, what, 99% of us have got uh, Active Directory, some kind of Microsoft environment. See what that's already there that, uh, that you're just not taking advantage of. And then uh, would be remiss to show you the business side of it, right? This would be how you build that program. Uh, top level decisions to implement the controls. Assign a program manager uh, who will be responsible, be the pusher. Uh, what's the long-term sustainability of your defense? Start with the gap analysis. Do that. Show your boss where you guys are. And it's hard to say I'm broken, but you're never going to get what you need unless you show them that you're... So it's like when your kid comes up to you and asks for a Band-Aid. That's the first thing I do. I'm like, where are you bleeding? Right? I'm not going to give you a Band-Aid unless you show me where you're bleeding. Show them that you're bleeding. It hurts. It hurts deep down inside. It can be soul-sucking to prove to show somebody that you're not perfect, but you're not going to get your Band-Aid. You're not going to get the fix unless you do it. Long-term plans, definitions and goals. You know, Embed that into your security policy. Make it part of it. Do its assessments and then, of course, educate your work workforce. So here's the reference works, uh, uh, websites. I'll have this information up on the Dropbox. Um, there's the um, website there. There is my information. And I think I'm, I'm finished. That was kind of like a sprint. You never know. Like, I want to put so much in there. And I know I've got such a convinced amount of time. Um, so if you have any questions, come up and see me. Send me an email. And uh, I can give you some more information on the controls. It's been a, it's been a, a career saver so far for me. So thank you guys.